All right, on this week's episode, we have Matt Tatum. Matt has hunted with Midwest Whitetail with Chasey November and the hunting public for some of their private farm hunts. You can check out his Kansas crib, so let's go. Hey, come on in. I'm uh, Matt Tatum, uh, Josh, brother Josh, and uh, friends with Derek, so uh, come on in, I'll show you what I got. I work for a phone company, local phone company around here. I've been doing it for over almost 13 years now. So gets me out and about and gets me driving around so I get to see some stuff. But uh, like I said, one of the, my passions is hunting and fishing. So this is my son, Maddox. Uh, he just started last year. So we'll get to see his first deer here in a little bit. But uh, yeah, we'll get started. So yeah, uh, we'll just go ahead and start right here. This is actually uh, my wife's biggest buck. She's hunted a grand total of uh, six days and killed three deer. And so the last two deer she's hunted twice and killed a, about 130 inch eight. And then the last time she went hunting was this one. So uh, this was a pretty crazy hunt. I think, uh, yeah, it aired on um, the hunting public, but super cool hunt. I'd been hunting, uh, Josh and I went up to uh, Nebraska for uh, five or six days on a Mueller hunt. We came back and I, hunted, I was hunting for a drop time buck and uh, really wasn't the best day. And I was like, let's just, uh, let's go out, babe. You haven't been out all week. So let's go hunting. So I think it was uh, 19th November. Uh, wind was blowing like 30 mile an hour. Went and sat in a hay bale blind. And sure enough, this guy came came down the draw, pushing the doe, jumps the fence. And she made a like a 15 yard shot. So yeah, for one day going out. So I always call her, I'm her, I'm her best guide. So, <laughs> so anyway, um, so uh, we'll go ahead and get this guy out of the way. This is a pretty cool bird. I shot this with a good buddy of mine, TJ, on his ground. When I first shot this bird, I had really no idea what the heck I was doing as far as what kind of bird this was. I knew it was a Canada goose, but uh, after a bunch of research, we figured out it was a quill lake, and I was like, oh, it's kind of a big deal. So, and I'll go ahead and get that out of the way. The, the band and the uh, collar didn't come from, didn't come with him, so they were added on later, but uh, super cool bird means a lot to me. Let's see here. These are some of the, some that I just got, um, Finally got caught up on and uh, finished up the European mounts. This is actually the buck, the last buck I shot, uh, shot this last year. It's a buck I called Droopy. Man, uh, if you've watched any of that footage, just had a crazy, crazy uh, year last year. Just all sorts of crazy rut activity. Um, man, there was just, just tons of deer. I was seeing good deer every day. And um, I was hunting on the 15th of November, which is my favorite day to be in the tree killed like three I think I've killed three personally on on the 15th and I know Josh and Derek they killed two in one day on the 15th and so uh, just always seems like a good day and uh, when you got a six-year-old 145 inch come walking by you at like seven yards it's hard to pass and so super excited about that it was a crazy crazy hunt this is a buck that uh Probably the one that broke my heart the most. This was the first buck I made a bad, bad shot on. And I finally, we finally ended up, neighbor getting a hold of me and actually had found him. But what well, the deal was this, I was uh, filming myself, had a decoy out, and this guy came came down the draw pushing a doe. And kind of where he was coming in, I kind of had to, was filming out of the same window and shooting out of the same window and had to kind of lean. And I pulled the shot and uh, he was quartering two just a hair and I pulled it and it hit just right here in front of his shoulder. And he took off, and uh, I knew it was a questionable shot, but he took off, and he only ran like 30 yards back in the trees and started kind of, you know, the kind of swaying and tail flicking and kind of easing off. And I could see just there's there's a bunch of blood pouring out of him. So I was like, well, it was a questionable shot, but I think it's I think I got in there far enough. Well, the bad thing about that morning was it was November the 13th, and uh, we just had a fresh snow that came in that night, and it was getting up to about 40, 50 degrees that afternoon while the snow started burning off. So we made the decision to go in um, a little early. Uh, I think we went in about one o'clock, which normally I probably would have waited another, probably at least to that evening. Cause I shot him like at 8.30 in the morning. Ended up, he ended up bedding down four different times within about 250 yards. And we we're just getting ready. After we got to where he found his second bed, we we're gonna back out and Josh, my brother started walking down the fence line. Well, he ended up jumping him up about another 
65, 70 yards there. Went over on the neighbors, which is like 500 and some acres of just woolly mess. When that happened, I contacted all the neighbors, said, hey, I, I shot a buck. I think it's a fatal shot, but I can't find him. And so I kind of, he never showed back up on trail cameras, so I kind of said that was the end of my season and just hoped and prayed something would happen. And um, I think it was October the next year, I got a call from one of the neighbors I'm pretty good friends with, said, hey, I found a deer. I think it might be yours. And sure enough, walked in when uh, he took me in there and found it. And sure enough, with all the character I knew right away, right off it was him. So he ended up from where I shot him to where they found him was over like a mile and a half, mile and three quarters, something like that. And so in kind of the same direction, but yeah, so that was, that was pretty brutal. I, I was pretty sick over that deer. This is a pretty cool deer. This is buck. This buck we actually have more history of than any buck we've ever had over there. And we've been hunting where this buck came from. We've I've been hunting this since I was, I mean, since I first started hunting. Um, this is a buck we call Squints. My dad actually shot this buck uh, during rifle season last year, 2020 season. He actually, I don't know if you can see this, his skull is all sorts of messed up. And so I don't know uh, why we called him Squints. Was like, I've got like five or six years of uh, of child camera pictures of him, but every picture he's always squinting in every, every single one of them. And so he's been mainly a mainframe. Most of the time he was a nine pointer one year, broke off both his brows in 17 when I passed him. Um, but so I don't know, he's like got a super, super short snout. And so I don't know if something happened when I honestly, I wish I could find someone that could tell me what happened to that deer. But um, yeah, just a crazy, but so in, I think it was 2017, I was uh, I was hunting a drop time buck, and it was one of three deer that I kind of just said, these are the deer that I'm going to hunt. I've killed one, passed one, and then I never caught up to the drop time. Saw him four times, closest I got was 150 yards from him. The day after I uh, saw the drop time buck, this buck came in, and it was, oh, I probably had like a 35-yard standing shot, and um, which <laughs> no, TJ told me. He told me that I was an idiot, and I probably was, but I probably should have shot him then. But anyway, that kind of started the history of this deer. And then in uh, 18, Josh's wife had tension on a trigger of a crossbow, and he spooked up out of there and she almost killed him then. Didn't see him in 19. And then in uh, last year, Maddox's first year, um, I was actually, we were trying to get on this deer, and we'd saw him, we, we ended up hunting for four days, and uh, we saw him on the second day. Couldn't get a real good shot. He was still back up in the trees. And then so and then it rained the next day, and we kind of went out. And anyway, we ended up coming back. So on the fourth day, we decided to make a move on this buck. He was running the bachelor group. And uh, we got in, on, uh, got in real tight to where their bedroom was, and they were making their way out off this creek bottom bedroom back into some bean fields, and we got back into the trees with them. And uh, this buck and the buck... We'll, I'll show you here in a minute that Maddox shot. Um, we're both there about 50 yards, and I kind of wanted to kind of clear each other so he didn't get too nervous. And, well, this buck got a little squirrely on him, and he kind of got out of, out of sight of him, and uh, his buck was still standing there, so I wasn't going to let him pass his deer. So he ended up shooting that. But uh, anyway, so fast forward to rifle season, and Dad has both my son and then my, uh, my brother's son, uh, Ritter, and he's hunting with his uh, old marlin and ended up killing this guy like the second week of rifle season. So super cool deer. Have Like I said, we've seen this deer a ton of times, ton of trail cam pictures. Just uh, a pretty cool deer, even though he's not the biggest. But, man, he's pretty just a pretty neat deer and a lot of history with him. So this guy, um, this was a buck that um, – my godfather ended up shooting a rifle season last year. I think he goes 184, I think is what what he said. Yeah, just a beast. I mean, big body, kind of just had everything to him. You know, maybe some bigger fours and he would have been even just a 200. But, um, yeah, he was over 300 pounds. Took three of us to get him, get him loaded into the truck. But, uh, yeah, super cool deer. And then Josh found these sheds. I don't know, the, the year or two before that, and uh, we're pretty sure, same same area. I think this was like a half a mile from where he found these to where that buck was killed. So, yeah, pretty sure those are him. So, anyway, yeah, then I'll take over, and uh, this is uh, antelope I shot. 
2012, I killed that buck uh, out in western Kansas with a bow. That that guy uh, is what I always say, I'd rather be lucky than good. So that deer, I started to make a stock in on him, and he had three does with him. And it was first thing in the morning, and he was kind of out in some um, prairie grass. And I think he ended up wanting to be over in... Uh, so, like I think it was a wheat field at the time. I was making a stock. I was still about 300 yards from him, and uh, all of a sudden the does just started working their way towards me, and they came right by me at like 50 yards, and he ended up on a dead run and coming by and stopping at like 50 yards and made a good shot on him and killed him. So, like I said, I was pretty lucky. Big open open area, and they decided to run right by me. So, but super cool. So yeah, this is uh, this is Maddox's first deer. So he killed that during the um, youth season here in Kansas. They've got a season there first of September, and uh, I think what he what he went like 153 inch eight, mainframe eight with a little, few kickers. So no, we didn't go that big. He was 153. So yeah, he's uh, spoiled. So yeah, <laughs> to be first first deer. So a lot bigger than my first deer. I promise you that. Mine didn't even have horns. It was a slick head. So. We'll probably get start. Um, yeah, here's a few of the sheds that uh, I've kind of collected over the years. Kind of some drop tine kind of stuff. Kind of cool stuff. This was a pretty good shed that we found. Kind of chewed up. But this is a buck. Um, I think we've. Uh, filmed with uh midwest whitetail on i think it was on the chasing november uh this is a buck that uh, called the Havel blind buck this was a year that um tj josh and i we all killed uh deer like in the 160s so it was one of the best years that we ever we had and uh yeah just super super fun hunt um josh was filming for me um had a bunch of extra gopro footage on him and uh yeah just crazy I think he went uh, low 160s. I think he's like 161, 162, something like that. So, yeah, my biggest buck to date. And I think he was, um, they had some friends that, uh, that he actually came, um, he came two miles from where he summered. We had some friends over there. They had, uh, they said he was uh, five years ago. This is one of the few deer that I actually don't have uh, pictures of, or um, I didn't get uh, age, but, um, they said he was a five-year-old, and they had two or three years of, of pictures with him, and he came two miles, and I think it was the night, 18th or 19th, and it was like 75, 70, 78 degrees out when we killed this deer. Uh, but, yeah, it was a super cool hunt. Pretty fun. That one was. Uh, we'll talk about this guy first. Uh, this is deer means probably the most to me. Hey, sweetie. Want to say hi? This is my daughter. Mackenzie, can you say hi? No? You got stuff all over your face. <laughs> all right, we'll see you. Oh boy. So yeah, we'll talk about this deer next. Um, this deer is pretty special deer to me. This was uh, kind of the, one of the first good deer, not really nice deer that, uh, that I was able to take on film. And uh, kind of one of the first deer that I kind of set out, said this is, this is the buck I want to kill and this is the only one I'm going to kill. I think this deer goes, uh, he goes right, just over 150 inches, and he broke off probably about three inches off his G2 on his right side. Uh, this is a buck called Cue Ball. 2015, uh, I killed this deer. Josh was filming me on November 1st out of the set, and um, pretty slow morning, bluebird morning, and we're kind of down in the uh, bottom of a kind of a, a pasture draw. And uh, him and two does dump in over the hill, and it's just like chaos. They're just running circles around us. And this deer is standing at about 10 yards and right behind a tree, this limb, and I got no shot. And Josh laid down some pretty cool footage of this deer, like zoomed in on his eye. And so, um, yeah, he busted up out of there and, and – uh, and thought I was because usually you know you only get one chance at him, so I thought that that was the kind of the end of it. And so um, fast forward um, on the 14th, November 14th was a Friday, 
and I drove, I got off work and drove out there and, um, saw this buck, uh, with another buck pushing a doe up on top of the hill, just above, uh, up on the neighbors, just above where, uh, where I could hunt, where I almost killed that deer. And, um, so I had a good idea that he was probably going to be back in there the next day. So Derek goes with me the next day. Uh, we go in there, uh, and there was a buck in there with a hot doe in that draw. And then there was two or three other bucks in there. And then, uh, this guy showed up, they were out there about a hundred yards or so back up in that thicket with that doe running around. And then eventually he just kind of ended up working his way back down the draw to us and shot him about. 10 steps from where he was standing 15 days before and uh, was finally able to take him. So, yeah, that deer meant a lot to me. So kind of the first first one that kind of got us going and and uh, first good deer and awesome footage that I think we put down. So, uh, yeah, means a lot to me, that one. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll talk about this guy. Um, this is a deer, my buddy TJ's, that uh, the rancher had found dead when they were burning pasture and uh, Josh ended up mounting it for him and uh, actually the cape was off a deer that I um, one of the first I think the second deer I f we killed off of that we filmed for Midwest White so that I use for my rattling antlers now but uh, uh, it was a beautiful cape and I let him use it so we were always in a, a argument of uh, oh, I always bothering about hey it's time for me to uh, get my end of the deal and let him stay at my house so <laughs> but uh he's in my house for now um but uh yeah just uh if you like big eights man that guy's pretty pretty crazy uh 169 and some change uh 16 inch d2s and for as spindly as he is he's not broke up at all but uh just a uh, crazy deer and you know i don't know it's an awesome deer man hard to hard to beat if you like big eights so and i kind of got a thing for eights so <laughs>